Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today um, we're going to be covering some more interpreting information. So interpreting information has been quite highly requested over the last couple of days. And to be honest, it's my least favorite subsection within decision making. Um, so it is quite a challenging um, section, but I thought I would run through three questions here, kind of continuing with some of the themes um, and ideas that we discussed in previous videos. So if you guys haven't seen um, my first, well, I guess my first three um, two or three interpreting information videos, please do, go, please do go back to my channel. And if you check out the playlists on my homepage, you can see that everything is quite clearly divided into relevant sections. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So as always, I like to read the first line, okay, of the passage. So in order to understand the character and the lifestyles of the people of a civilization, the geography of this region cannot be overlooked. It's hardly possible to understand history without this constant companion. So let's have a look at the first one. History influences geography. Well, it says in order to understand the character and lifestyles, geography cannot be overlooked. So it kind of suggests that geography allows you to understand kind of character and lifestyles. But that doesn't really talk about history too much, I don't think. Um, maybe we can continue reading. So many of the earliest civilizations sprang up alongside river systems and farming practices being timed and tailored around fluctuating water levels is well documented. The accessibility of a region, especially by sea, triggers economic and social development as it facilitates the movement of industrial goods and services, making them more competitive in world markets. Remember, as I'm doing this as well, I'm trying to remember what is happening in each line. Do you remember what I said about the memory idea? The economic success of re resource regions further reinforces this correlation. So overall, I'd say it's kind of saying that the geography is the important idea and that a lot of things that happened in the past were because of, let's say, like good access to water or good river systems, etc., etc. So I'd probably argue that this one is no, because instead of saying history influences geography, I think it's meant to be more geography influences history. Geographical patterns deeply impact human life. Um, I would definitely say so. That's kind of what we were talking about because it said about how civilizations sprang up along river systems and farming practices are timed and tailored around fluctuating water levels. So I would say yes here. Rivers provide a natural defense against enemies and um, invaders. Well, I don't remember reading anything about enemies and invaders at all, really. It doesn't talk about anything about defense. Um, so I would say no. So remember, we're only allowed to make inferences if there's something to that level mentioned. So for example, if it said rivers are a good, um, you know, rivers were um, used as protective measures against invading forces, then you could conclude that. But it never says anything like that in, in the passage. So remember, you can only take that, you can only have that leeway um, if something relevant is present in the passage. The average income levels in landlocked regions are probably lower than those with coastal access. Well, it says the accessibility of a region um, triggers economic and social development. OK, so with landlocked regions, you don't have sea access because it's landlocked. It's surrounded by this uh, surrounded by land. So therefore, it's probably going to have lower social development and economic development. So, yeah, probably will have lower average income levels. So this is a relevant inference that we can kind of make. OK. The financial success of some countries may be attributed to their vast iron ore and gold deposits. The economic success of resource-rich regions further reinforces this correlation. So, once again, if you guys haven't watched my first video, I would really recommend you to, um, because I really talk about some of the differences between verbal reasoning and interpreting information. So here, for example, it says about resource-rich regions. And if you got given this statement in uh, verbal reasoning, you'd absolutely be right in saying can't tell um, or even false because I guess it doesn't uh, we can't tell because it doesn't specifically mention iron or, iron ore or gold deposits like how do you know they're talking about these ones and not others right um, but the point here is this is interpreting information you're allowed to make some inferences and it says resource rich regions had economic success so the financial success of some countries may be attributed to their vast iron ore and gold deposits yes you can say that okay perfect so that's the first question on to the next one then so once again, if you guys would like to take a pause, maybe, um, see if you can do this question, um, and then we will go through it afterwards, okay? So, a radio interview was broadcast yesterday involving a person who had made anonymous allegations about a sports person who had used banned substances over a period of time to enhance their performance in competitions, okay? The whistleblower did not want their name to be made public. Um, I would say yes, because it says it was an anonymous allegation. That's probably why they didn't want their name to be public, because, I mean, otherwise they would have come out with it. Why make it anonymous? The vast majority of the public did not believe the claims of the whistleblower. OK, we haven't read anything about that yet, so we're going to continue reading. A TV news channel requested an interview with the person making the allegations refused. After these allegations were made, the public took the social media to announce the claims as false and to condemn the whistleblower. Public opinion appeared to be in favour of the sports person. OK, so with this one, um, the problem here is it says the vast majority. OK, and so although it may be written like it sounds like the public doesn't believe it, it doesn't 
reference anything like the majority or most or anything like that. It just says, for example, the public took to social media and the public opinion appeared to be in favour of the sports person. Okay, but it doesn't specifically say that the majority didn't believe the claims of the whistleblower. And so this is one of the ideas. So in my very first video on interpreting information, I think I talked about the idea of words like clearly and directly. So here, the vast majority, like that's more of like a definitive thing. So you, def you definitely have to be able to see that. This is less of an inference one and more of like, okay, it's just not here. So you can't do anything about that information. You can't say that for sure. So that's why that's no. Okay. And um, the sports person is well known and popular. Um, do, 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 do. Once again, um, if we keep reading, so an investigation has been set up by the relevant sports authority to investigate the claim. Um, I would say no, because I don't necessarily think it says anything at all. Uh, it doesn't say anything about whether they're well known or popular. It says they're a sports person, which doesn't necessarily mean they have to be well known and popular. The whistleblower was a well known sports person. Uh, once again, nothing is known about the whistleblower. Okay, the sports authorities have taken the claim seriously. So it says an investigation has been set up by the relevant sports authority to investigate the crime. So yes, I would agree that's true. Okay, so um, yeah, so these two, I guess there was just no inf information on. Um, this one, it was the idea of the majority. We were unable to conclude that. Okay, and then the last question. So once again, if you want to take a pause um, and then you can see what you get as an answer and then we can go through it. Okay. So, previous studies have estimated that the intolerance of statin, a drug which reduces the risk of heart attack, may be as high as 50%. So, one in two sufferers from heart disease will experience side effects from taking statin. Okay, so we haven't got any side effects stuff yet, so let's keep going. So, it says, new research drawing on data from more than 4 million patients um, worldwide suggested to be like, most likely below 10%. Professor uh, M. Banak of the Medical University of Lodz, Poland, said that the most Cases of statin tolerance due to patient expectations of side effects as a result of misinformation. He calls it a placebo effect where people experience body or, bodily or psychological side effects of taking certain drugs or what they told their friends. So for this one, you kind of have to put ideas together. It says there's an intolerance to statins, which is more likely to be below 10%. And then that intolerance kind of kind of manifests as side effects. Most of them are due to patient experience of side effects. So when it says one in two sufferers of heart disease will experience side effects of taking statins, I would say no, because this data says it's probably more likely 10%. And once again, that's that 10% isn't just necessarily just about side effects. That's That 10% is about the intolerance, of which it says most are side effects. So once again, it's going to be too low. Statins are largely ineffective in preventing heart attacks. Um, well, it says statins reduce the risk of heart attacks. So once again, I would say no. 90% of Polish cardiology patients report no side effects of taking statins as part of their treatment. Um, so you can see here, the trick here is obviously the person that's speaking as conducted is from Poland, but if you have a look here, there's 4 million patients worldwide that the data was drawn upon from. So it's not just Polish cardiology patient, patients. So this is trying to get us to use, like read around the information that we have and almost trying to trick us. Word of mouth may be to blame for reports of intolerance to statins. Yes, because I remember down here when people experience um, bodily or psychological side effects because of what they were told by their friends. So that could be true. The placebo effect can induce negative emotional symptoms because it says uh, experience psychological side effects. So yes, I would agree there. Okay, so, and once again, this is a really important point that I want to illustrate is you guys may be thinking, well, these questions are so different to the Medify ones, and which is why I would really, really recommend you guys to do the questions from the question bank. So these are all questions from the official UK question bank. And I think that's one of the areas where Medify and probably Medentry as well has its weaknesses because the the inferences are just not as good, right? It's I think the Medify questions feel a bit more syllogism, syllogism like, okay, not in because of how you use the methods and such, but more in terms of how they come to their conclusions with their logic and stuff. There's less room for inference, whereas here there is a little bit more room. Okay, so I hope this video makes sense. Um, just wanted to walk you guys through some more interpreting information questions. Um, and um, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, share the channel around. Um, we're almost at 900 subscribers, which is incredible. Um, and uh, please do let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Okay, see you guys in the next video.